Hello everyone, I haven't done a proper shop my stash video in a hot minute and I figured I would revisit this whole video idea but we're also going to touch upon that a little bit more while I'm doing my makeup. But before we start let me tell you the products that I have chosen for today's shop my stash. Let's start off with the base. I have my um, instant concealer here from Clarins which I'm trying so hard to finish up and I think shop my stash any other opportunity that I have um, to finish it up I will use. Then I have my Estee Lauder double wear nude water fresh foundation I have even marked um, where I am at this point because I would actually really like to finish foundation it's a great formula unfortunately it has been discontinued in the meantime but I have found a deal for it in the face of the MAC Studio Fix Waterweight foundation I want to say. I have a video I can link that up for you if you would like to check it out where I compare this formula to the MAC formula and they are essentially pretty much identical or at least to the extent that I can tell. So I would actually really like to finish this one up because it's already over two years old. Then I'm going to finish off my base makeup with this little Inny Mini Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in the shade Dim Light, which is, I think, a much better um, color choice for me in comparison to Mood Light, which I had before. I've actually been using it um, recently quite a bit and I do think it works really well with the formula of the Estee Lauder foundation, so I would like to continue using them um, together. Then for my bronzer, I'm going to be taking my Chanel Soleil and the Chanel bronzer. Unfortunately, mine is full of hair and dust and stuff because it's a cream and it just everything kind of like sticks to it. But I think I'm going for like a very like olive golden makeup today and I think the tone of this bronzer which is a little bit more yellow based will fit the makeup really really well. Then I'm going to pull out this beautiful melt blush, one of their cream blush lights. This is in the shade Lynx, which is a gorgeous like peachy gold cream blush. I really love the formula of these blushes and I actually haven't used them in a while because recently we've had to wear masks again everywhere the whole time also at work. And I'll be honest with you, um, I have preferred to reach for my Pat McGrath blushes because they just last so well underneath the mask and certainly better than a cream formula. Formula, but I am just going to the city today for a little bit to grab lunch so I'm not going to be wearing my mask as much and it's also just for a few hours so I feel like I can get away with wearing a nice cream blush. Then to finish off with my highlighter I'm going to pull out this uh, glow kit from Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is actually a mashup of different uh, glow kits that I have put um, shades in here to just kind of like have all of my big glow kit uh, highlighters in one place. Um, this actually did originally come with this uh, highlighter kit though and this is the shade Butterscotch over here. It's a beautiful like golden toned, champagne toned highlighter and I've recently been trying to decide whether I still like the formula of these highlighters enough to keep them in my collection and I remember Butterscotch being one of my favorites so I figured I would give it another go today. Then let's move on into eyeball territory. So I'm going to be pulling out an oldie but a goodie today. This is my subculture palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills and I am mainly going to be pulling it out for some of the matte eyeshadows in here, some of my favorite matte eyeshadows in here. So this is the shade Edge and the shade Destiny. I think those are the only two shades that I'm going to be pulling out from this palette because for shimmers I want to do something different. And I can talk a little bit more about, you know, how I feel about this palette nowadays overall. I've had this since 2017, so it's by no means a new palette, but in my opinion, the performance of the eyeshadows hasn't changed. It's just that I know now that certain shadows I use, certain shadows I don't use, and some of the formulas in here were never good to begin with. And the part that's probably going to shock you the most, we're going to be pulling some of my single eyeshadows. The one that I want to put on, on my lid is this beautiful shade over here. It is a shade Golden Olive from Colored Rain. It has this beautiful, exactly what it describes itself to be, golden olive tone. Then in my inner corner, I was thinking of putting this shade from, um, also from Color Drain. It's the shade Flashy. It's a beautiful, like, golden green duochrome. But then I realized that it might be more fun if I put something sparklier. And this would be um, the JD Glow shade in the color 365. I haven't used my JD Glow eyeshadows in a really really long time so I figured uh, this one might fit the look really really well. So we're going to play a bit around with subculture and these single eyeshadows. 
And last but not least, for lips, I have chosen this combination. I'm not quite sure yet how it's going to work out, but um, the idea is that we're going to go for like a nude lip that is a little bit more grungy. I'm going to use this shade from the I Need Nude collection from Natasha Denona. This is the shade Noah, which as you can see has this very interesting grungy yellow tones to it. And I think it might fit the look really, really well. But either way, I'm going to top it off with this beautiful lip gloss that I have from Pat McGrath Labs. This is the shade Gold Allure that I obtained recently. It's a gorgeous like golden green uh, flex that this lip gloss has and I think it will fit the look really well. So without further ado, I'm just going to turn you around and we're going to get started. It is a very sunny day here, which is fabulous because I don't think I remember the last time we had like a beautiful sunny day to go out. So I'm really pumped for that. It's still really cold, but you know, at least it's sunny. I'm going to grab my uh, Glow Lust by Auric to just start off the whole look as usual. So let's talk about the Shop My Stash series. Like one of the reasons I stopped doing these videos a couple of months ago is because I noticed that there wasn't much interest into them. And I've never been someone to really like care whether a video sells well or whether it doesn't. But Oh, I actually grabbed the wrong brush. Okay, apparently we're going with this one. But you know, it's far more satisfactory when you invest uh, your time into doing something that people actually want to watch. And I just accidentally grabbed my classic base instead of my mini base. So I'm just going to switch up now because I prefer to apply my concealer uh, and, you know, stuff underneath my eyes with the mini base because it's a bit smaller. So like I said, I did a couple of Shop My Stash videos in the beginning of last year and then I did a couple of videos um, revisiting Natasha Denona palettes, which actually were quite well received and I did add them to my Shop My Stash uh, playlist. I have a whole playlist for all of the videos that I've done in this series if you're ever curious to check out the rest. But past that point I didn't really do much with this series because I really wasn't sure what to do with it. And also at this point I'm a little bit unsure what kind of things I would like to film for my channel because I've, you know, consistently been filming the um, pairing series at, and overall you know I am not a review channel you cannot come to my channel and rely on me to review all the new makeup for you that's just not going to happen so I would say shop my stash video isn't something revolutionary for me because basically most of my content is uh, shop my stash the Pat McGrath pairing series is basically a shop my stash and you know the rest of my uh, actual shop my stash videos were more aimed at pulling out products that I really haven't used in a really long time like my single eyeshadows or, or my subculture palette from uh, ABH but as I mentioned I noticed that these videos seem to be a lot less interesting uh, to you and I'm far more you know excited to film a video when I know that I'm going to have a lot of interaction uh, about it with you in the comment section. So with that I actually just want to ask for your honest opinion. Are you interested in seeing more of these videos? Like more of these like shop my stash videos where I really pull out makeup from the archives? Or do you think the pairing uh, series is enough for you and you would actually far prefer it if I do shop my stash videos that are more related to Pat McGrath palettes like I don't know I can do a week off and then we can go through mm, all the mothership palettes um, I've done these for newer releases from Pat McGrath but a couple of you have indicated that you might have interest in me doing you know a week off and then the older mothership palettes would that be something that you would like to see from me let me know. Like if this setup of Shop My Stash video is not something that is interesting to you, then I will just, you know, do this in my private time without filming it. I am curious what kind of other videos you would like to see from me. I will do random tag videos. I've seen a new palette, like eyeshadow palette um, tag floating around, so I was thinking of doing that. Like I said, I want to do my um, ranking of my favorite Pat McGrath eyeshadows from each palette. I'm still working on that. After the last time I rage quit, I haven't actually revisited my ranking, so I really need to work on that. But at the same time, I also feel like maybe I shouldn't only talk about Pat McGrath and I should mention other brands in my videos every now and then. Although my interests comprise of 95% my Pat McGrath makeup. And I, I don't know, I want to do like something fun, like um, that's more like a series style, because I enjoy to have that kind of... Hey, Mama! Hey, Nicola! Papa Banner! Ja, papa is beneden. Zou je met papa naar beneden gaan? Nee. Mm, need to get rid of the toddler. Okay, I finished my base makeup, got rid of the toddler. So let's continue chatting. Uh, so like I said, I would like to do 
more like series style videos because I like to have something that I can consistently fall back onto in terms of ideas instead of, you know, wrecking my head every week what kind of new and original video idea I would like to film. Um, I've been thinking, oh, I'm grabbing my bronzer now, by the way. I've been thinking about restarting doing empties. I used to do empties a lot on my channel many, many years ago. But again, it was one of those types of videos that kind of grew out of style. People, people just weren't interested in empties anymore because at a certain point, empties became very repetitive. Like someone would show the same uh, pack of makeup wipes that they, they they have used up and I was like you know what that's fucking boring I don't want to watch that so I myself stopped watching empties videos and I will usually film the type of videos that I would like to watch that's how selfish I am and I stopped filming empties videos but I have like I've really been enjoying and I have so much like respect and awe for Alice who has all of these like different types of um, monthly roundups and empties and uh, favorites that you will film every single month and I really love that kind of, you know, consistency that I can always uh, rely on the fact that in the end of the month she will have a monthly roundup where she talks about her favorites, her empties, you know, and all of that. And I really love watching that series when Alice does it, but I don't know whether I can really like, or like a little whole video, but I don't know how that would really work for me and the way that I consume makeup, especially lately. Uh, for instance, I haven't bought any makeup, I haven't bought anything since that Bridgerton palette. I bought that pukey green dress that I showed you a couple of videos ago, and that is the only thing I have bought since the end of last year. And in the end of last year I bought the Bridgerton palette, and that is the last makeup item that I have bought. In the beginning of the month of January, because it was my birthday in the beginning of January, I thought, well, maybe for my birthday I can treat myself to a couple of items from Victoria Beckham's makeup line because I've been very curious to try her makeup. But then I went on the website and the item that I want the most is one of her uh, bronzers. But the lighter shades have been sold out pretty much everywhere. And then for a split second I thought, okay, then maybe I'll buy one of the darker ones, like one of the deepest shades, just so I can buy something. But then I slapped myself on the hand and I realized that that is not what we do on this channel anymore. And I didn't, so I haven't really bought anything, uh, nor do I have any plans of buying random shit just to buy something. I, at least I'm trying my best to not do that, because it's a really bad habit. Now I'm going to grab my uh, Melt Lynx blush. And yeah, that leaves me a little bit at an impasse as to what kind of videos to film, because I don't buy enough makeup to do holes. I don't know that I use the same makeup item consistently throughout a month, to call it a favorite. I could try to like keep track of products that I really enjoy using during a certain period of time and maybe we can do something like, I don't know, quarterly favorites or something. But in the end of the day, because I don't buy enough makeup, we will always be talking about pretty much the same products and I can imagine that after a while that gets a little bit boring. So, yeah. I would really appreciate it if you have any ideas what kind of videos you would like to see from me, uh, given that you know pretty well what my makeup collection consists of and uh, the fact that you cannot come here for reviews of all the newest shit. I love what a beautiful, youthful glow these uh, blushes have. So, so nice. All right, let's pull out that Anastasia Beverly Hills uh, Glow Kit and use this shade here, the shade Butterscotch. I used to really love this highlighter, but I mentioned in one of my previous videos I recently used one of my other favorite highlighters from Anastasia Beverly Hills. It's a shade from the um, Aurora Glow Kit and I'm noticing the same thing that I did when I used that glow kit as well. Oh, I need to charge my camera. I don't know whether you can see it, but I can see all these like tiny specks of glitter and that never used to bother me before, but because I'm now used to the very smooth formulas that Pat McGrath has for her highlighters, I'm kind of like not used to seeing that chunky glitter on my face anymore and I can't decide whether it's bothering me or whether I just need to get back into the groove of enjoying these highlighters because otherwise I really enjoy the glow that they give and they are so, you know, reflective. But I just don't know whether maybe I have not outgrown Anastasia Beverly Hills highlighters. It could be. So your input 
regarding the contents of my channel would be vastly appreciated. Now without further ado, let's jump into the Anastasia Beverly Hills subculture palette where like I said I'm going to be using mainly the two matte shades that I po pointed out in in my intro as well. I'm going to first go into the shade Edge, which is this beautiful, like, sort of grungy, mustardy yellow shade, and I'm going to put that in the inner part of my crease. Then in the outer part of my crease, I'm going to layer the shade Destiny, and then I'm going to try to build it up a little bit, and if I feel like I'm just missing a little bit of depth, I might add a bit of this uh, forest green, but honestly, I would like to stick to the more, like, grungy olivey greens, because that would fit the um, lid shades really well. Now the subculture palette is another palette that I've been thinking what exactly I would like to do because the matter of fact is I'm keeping it around mainly for these two shades, the shades Edge and Destiny because they are the ones that I use the most often. There are a couple of like peachy transition shades that I could make use of, um, that orange shade which is really lovely, but like let me just show you. The two like special duochrome shades, this one and this one, Unfortunately, in my personal palette, they were never of the best quality. They were very tightly pressed um, and I can barely get them to have any sort of pigmentation. And for the longest time, I thought that's how they were supposed to feel like. But a couple of years ago, I was in one of our local um, makeup stores, Douglas, right after I, they started carrying Anastasia Beverly Hills in their lineup. And I was in store, I saw the palette and I swatched it and I realized that the shades Electric and Cube, the two duochromes, are not at all supposed to be what they are in my palette. In my palette they are extremely hardly pressed, they are very emollient, they have a hard pan, you can barely get anything out of them. Um, they were supposed to be pretty much the texture of this bronze shade here, the shade Adorn, which is gorgeous. I used to love this shade, it was one of my favorite neutral shades a couple of years ago because it is just so soft and so impactful and so metallic and so beautiful and I realized that that's how these other two shades were supposed to feel like but in my palette they were never the standouts they were always the black sheep whereas the mattes were the real standouts for me because I just really enjoyed the grungy tones I'm just going to clean off the same brush and then going to the uh, olive green shade, the shade Destiny. So like I said, I've been keeping this whole palette just for these two shades that we're using today because I, they are pretty unique in my collection and I don't really have any other place where I have similar eyeshadows. I certainly don't have anything like this from Pat McGrath. So if she could just do me a favor and release mattes with these uh, tones, that would be sweet. Although I don't see her doing that anytime soon. When it comes to her mattes, she really sticks to the more, you know, classic browns. Which also makes sense because she's, you know, making palettes for the runway. And I don't think they wear crunchy greens on the runway. Or at least not as often. Why am I having issues blending this shade out now? What the fuck is going on? Can you see it's just not moving around at all? I also love the fact that this eyeshadow palette is basically a piece of makeup history. No one had ever made an eyeshadow palette color story quite so daring at a time where, you know, the naked palettes were the standard. It was back at the time Anastasia Beverly Hills was a more like edgy brand before they split from the Norvina sub brand and I don't really know what happened there. I, I still think their products are probably a very good quality um, and I think that it's also partially the fact that I kind of lost interest in their brand that I haven't been super into it anymore but we, I do have a lot of respect for them coming out with the subculture color story okay I'm going to take a little bit of my pixie epoxy now I'm literally trying to scrape the last bits of that glitter glue out of the container but it's getting harder and harder and I think I should probably just toss it or add it to my makeup empties if you would be interested to see empties. 
Okay, I'm going to apply this now all over my lid, also a little bit over top of the shade Destiny. And I'm going to grab my singles and I'm going to go into the shade Golden Olive here from um, Color Drain. Have I stopped following Color Drain or have they just not been doing anything interesting lately? I feel like I haven't heard anything about Color Drain in a really, really long time. Do they still make makeup? Maybe they do and I'm just an asshole because I haven't really been following them or for whatever reason Instagram hasn't showing me their newest releases. This is such a beautiful eyeshadow. As you know I struggle quite a bit to use my single eyeshadows because I prefer pre-made palettes and I cannot be bothered to be creating my own color stories with my single eyeshadows. But you know unique things like this shade for instance I don't want to part with. They're too beautiful. And now I think in my inner corner I'm just going to take the shade from JD Glow. I'm not going to use the uh, golden shade from um, Color Rain. And I'm going to pop that here into the inner portion of my eyelid and try to put it into my inner corner. These JD Glow shades are extremely sparkly. So in terms of uh, sparkle effect on the lid they are pretty much as spectacular as a Pat McGrath special shade but I feel like their texture is very very different and my personal preference will always be the textures from Pat McGrath but that's just because I'm a snob. On my lower lash line I'm going to go back into the subculture palette and take the uh, olive green the shade Destiny to apply that all over my lower lashes. I'm not going to do anything more complicated than that. I think I've always imagined that I will just continue using my favorite shades in the subculture palette and when I finish those that is when I'm going to get rid of that palette. Gone are the days when I thought that uh, one can only get rid of an eyeshadow palette if they have panned all the eyeshadows in it. That is just super fucking unrealistic especially if you kind of know that you don't like all the shadows equally which is the case for me and this eyeshadow palette. So I think I will just you know make peace with the fact that What's best is to just keep using the eyeshadows that I like until I pan them and then I can with clear conscious get rid of the whole thing. I finished the eye look with a little bit of mascara and now let's see whether that grungy nude shade from Natasha Denona will work with this look or whether I should emergently... emergently? I think that means something completely different. Urgently have to find a new lip shade. It looks very grey on camera. I'm not really sure why. I mean it is a very grungy color but it's looking really grey in the viewfinder so I'm very curious how that's going to work out together with that gold gloss from Pat McGrath Labs. It's either going to be another disaster or the gloss from Pat is actually going to fix the slightly dead look that I have right now. Okay I just applied a bunch on the back of my hand that's usually how I apply my lip glosses. And let's find out what happens if we layer that over top of Noah. The jury is out there on the lipstick choice. I'm not sure about it, but if I'm being honest with you, I just simply don't care. We're just going to leave it at that. This is the final look uh, with today's Shop My Stash. It turned out pretty grungy. Which I think is very much in line with what you would expect to get from the subculture palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills. So I'm not mad at the result. Hope you enjoyed it too. I'm sincerely hoping that a bunch of you will see this video and you will, you know, give me your genuine honest input about what kind of videos you would like to see from me. Uh, like I said, we have multiple options and I would rather communicate with you before I start doing something that you have no interest in. So be sure to let me know in the comment section what you would like to see from me in the coming months. As usual, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!